Tesla released their Q4 delivery numbers and it was a miss unfortunately from close to almost 440,000 vehicles in production only 405,000 of it was delivered although in my opinion i still think that's really good anything over 400k is an absolute i mean that's a sheesh moment right there but comparing to what i had of 434,000 estimate for deliveries eh, doesn't look too good in other words disappointment in fact it looked so bad that the stock price went down like almost 15 percent in a single flipping day which is just absolutely insane and yes i bought more shares so yeah but now that we know what the actual delivery numbers were in q4 for 2022 that pretty much wraps up the entire year of 2022 tesla grew about 40 percent compared to last year till now of around a little over 1.3 million vehicles which I personally predicted from the beginning of the year, they're going to do at least 1.4 this year, but almost 100k less. And we can see why because of the shutdowns in Shanghai and slow ramp up in Berlin and so on and so forth. The list goes on again. We can't really go back to exactly what has happened. We have to go forward with the numbers that we have. Although I do believe that 2023 is going to be a very juicy year. But let's first figure out what 2022, what Q4 earnings are going to be, their EPS and their stock price for Q4, another year. Now, I know last time I did the Q3 EPS, I was off by a lot. And that's because I didn't take in the equation of foreign exchange rate between the yen and the US. So in this one, we're definitely going to put that in and see what the most accurate number that we can get, the accurate EPS, of course, and of course, the stock price as well. So let's get down to it. And just to be sure, and you guys know this already, this is not financial advice. This is a prediction. I'm just a guy on YouTube that's going all into Tesla stock. So take all this with a grain of salt and obviously for entertainment purposes. So let's get down to it. All I ask return is a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. All right, so if you guys have been following me for some time, you guys already know this chart for those who are watching this for the first time. Let me simply go over so you're up to speed. In this chart, we only take in the fact of vehicles and FSD, nothing else, no energy, no insurance, nothing, nothing else at all. If you guys want that prediction, check it out. 2030 includes everything, even freaking robots, freaking Tesla bots and all that kind of stuff. Check it out. It's pretty darn juicy. But anyways, going back to this vehicle deliveries, as you guys already know, FSD price one time fee. We don't have any subscription base at the moment. Although we are getting a little bit more data than usual, which is really good, but we just don't have that solid data that we can fully, fully 100% rely on yet. So for now, we're just going to keep it at the one-time fee at a 15% rate of vehicles having FSD when customers order them. Then as you guys can see, total FSD, profit margin, and so on and so forth. One thing I do want to point out is the shares of standing is increasing. Most likely in, by end of 2022, it's going to continue increasing. Hopefully by 2023, it's going to start reducing because hopefully they'll do some buybacks, but we'll see what happens in 2023. So let's go ahead and put that number in. I believe the number was 405. 5,278 vehicles delivery. So let's go ahead and put that in and bam, look at all that numbers come in. I love it. So before we go into the juicy part of this prediction and of this chart and what the total revenue and the profits are going to be, I'm assuming that in Q4, the average selling price for every vehicle is going to be around 52,000. And, and as you guys can see from Q1 all the way to Q4, it is reducing. In Q3, it was around like 54,000 per each vehicle on the average. But because since they keep reducing prices, I brought it down to 52,000. Now this doesn't include the EV credit. The EV credit is an additional 7,500 to this, which I did not add here. So I'm keeping it a little bit conservative. Overall, total vehicle revenue is gonna be over $21 billion. In Q3, it was like almost reaching 18.7 billion. So that's a very good jump. In total revenue, if we add the FSD sales here on top, it's gonna be almost close to 22 billion dollars now most likely it's going to be a billion or two more than this because of energy energy is doing really good in q3 they did about a billion in revenue in just energy which is absolutely a sheesh moment right there but i'm excluding that so most likely this is going to be more closer to maybe 23 maybe even 24 billion dollars in q4 revenue now moving on to the net income now if we look at the net income as a total for q1 q2 and q3 in q1 it was around 17 percent in q2 it dropped down to about 13 percent because they couldn't deliver 100,000 vehicles because of the shutdown they had in china in q3 with a record delivery of 344,000, they had a net income percentage to revenue of close to 15 percent i mean just a little over 15 percent so i'm saying for q4 it's going to be 16% because they just did record again, 405,000 going over the 400K. So with the 16%, we get over $3.9 billion in net income for Q4, which is absolutely 
flipping amazing. If this Q4 becomes true, then this year in 2022, they can finish off the entire year for total revenue of over $79 billion and a net income almost reaching $12.8 billion, which is a sheesh moment. Now, the EPS. These two EPSs, I want you guys to keep in mind. In Q3, you guys saw that I made about a prediction of about $1.25 or $1.24 for EPS. It ended up being $1.05. I was way off, and that's because of the foreign exchange between the yen and the US. I did not put that in Q3, but here, we're gonna have to put it. So let's first do the EPS without including the foreign exchange. I'm gonna keep it the same with over $3.9 billion, and we get an EPS of around $1.24, which is a beat to Wall Street's of $1.22 or something like that. However, though, if we do reduce the foreign exchange, I'm gonna say in Q3, it was 250 million, and they did about 344,000 vehicles and deliveries. Here, we did 405,000 vehicle deliveries. So we have to reduce more. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce 275 million from this 3.9 billion. And subtracting 275 million off this 3.9 billion, we get about over 3.6 billion in net income, which is good, it's a record, but look at the EPS. It's a dollar and 15, which is a miss. And if this, what happens, we can see the stock price going even lower, which is just absolutely, it's gonna be a sheesh moment, I'm telling you. And if that happens, we're gonna see what the stock price is going to be in a second. But again, we're gonna we're probably gonna see another sell-off if that happens. A dollar and fifteen. It's gonna be the first miss since two years or something like that. So it's gonna be it's it's gonna be in, it's gonna be crazy. That's all I gotta say. It's gonna be flipping crazy. So again, two EPSs to keep in mind: a dollar fifteen and a dollar and twenty-four. Let's see what happens by end of this month when they release the Q4 earnings. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens. So now it's time to figure out what the stock price will be. If you guys are ready, man, then smash that like button, man. Come on, man. Let's go. So first, let's go ahead and figure out what the stock price would be without adding the foreign exchange with the three point nine billion. In net income so a dollar and 24 if that happens it's a beat and if this happens most likely we could see a small rally because hey they're still beating earnings they're still beating estimates at probably the worst time ever in the middle of a flipping recession so i do expect that and to see that right now the eps is around what 35 33 around there let's say 35 let's put 35 pe pretty much what the pe is and now with the 35 pe we get a stock price of 141 bucks per share now if we do get a small rally we could see a pe going up to 40 162 bucks per share but we're still in a recession again from january 21st to april 20th i think it's still gonna be a very very dark time for the entire stock market and the market because again quantitative easing interest rates going up and just missed earnings quarter by quarter from all companies i don't think the sentiment will be a whole lot better then until we see a pivot from the fed let's just say 40 pe as an optimistic pe for a time like this but for some reason let's say we go into a bull market again a full-on throttle bull market the fed pivots you know instead of doing quant quantitative tightening they do quantitative easing and they start reducing interest rates so then we can see the stock price i mean the pe going up to an easy easy 50 pe probably even a 60 pe to 250 bucks per share in my opinion now, what I believe, I think the stock price, if we are if we were in a bull market, 70 to 75 PE is where I think it's fair for Tesla, but we are not in that market. So, you know, going back to 50 PE at a good bull market, start of a bull market. But let's say things get worse and Tesla didn't deliver. We can see a PE getting dropped to 30, probably even 25, which would be 101 bucks per share with the record Q4. It's just ridiculous because it, you, it's just... And some are saying going below 100 bucks. And if we go below 100 bucks, we can see a stock price going to 81 bucks per share with a market cap of $255 billion. That's like, that's like almost Toyota's. I think Toyota is like 200 billion, if I'm not mistaken. That would be a PE of 15. Dude, they're not even growing 10%. These guys are growing 40%. Oh my God. At this point, if Tesla goes down to like a 15, 20, 25 PE, they're literally valuing Tesla as a flipping car company. And yes, I get it. 90%, 92% of all revenue and profits for, for Tesla is coming from vehicles. I get it. But why do we have to value Tesla as the same as GM, Toyota, Honda, all those other guys when they're losing market share, when they're not even growing? Honda just lost 20%. Volkswagen lost 9%. Tesla's growing 40%. Why is BYD at, at a 200 above PE? 
and why is Tesla going to be at a 1520p? It just doesn't, it boggles my mind. And that's why around this time, you know what? I kind of hope it goes to these levels. So I can just go buy more, man. I can buy more Tesla shares on the flipping cheap. Like, geez, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous what everyone is saying out there. But at this point, if it goes down to this level of a PE, then, you know, you, know, you already know they're valuing Tesla at a car company, comparing it to flipping Honda. Can you believe that? At the lowest, lowest, I'm gonna say 20 PE of a 81 bucks per share. And the highest we can see, in my opinion, in this bad sentiment is probably a 35 PE, maybe even a 30 PE. You know what, let's be more pessimistic. I know I'm, I'm more optimistic, but let's be pessimistic of a 30 PE of 121 bucks per share. So 20 PE to 30 PE, I can't believe I'm actually going down this low, it's ridiculous. I think 50 PE would make more sense over 200 bucks per share, at least, at least end of Q4. But again, we're going to dark times and you know, dark times doesn't care about how good or bad the company is. We already know that Tesla's not gonna go bankrupt. We already know that Tesla's gonna be coming out probably a whole lot stronger, not probably, will be coming out a whole lot stronger than we all will ever imagine after this bear market, after this recession. But it's just in a bear market, it's just valued differently and you know, it's just, <laughs> welcome to a bear market, this is how it is. Now let's go ahead and add the foreign exchange from the yen to the USD and let's see what happens. So we said what? It was 3.6, over $3.6 billion. And with a 30 PE, we get about 119 bucks per share. And with a 20 PE, 79 bucks per share. Not too far off, but very, very similar. Again, 15 PE, if it goes down to that low, 59 bucks per share. Let's go to 10 PE, which I, it's, <laughs> if that happens, 40 bucks, and then 5 PE. <laughs> Can you guys imagine 5 PE? Anywho, 30 PE of 119 in this market as like, let's say the bull in the bear market. Obviously, again, if we were actually in a bull market, a 60 PE of 237 bucks per share, minimum 50 PE of 198. In my opinion, that's, that looks more right than flipping 30 PE, but we're just not in that market yet. So overall, the realistic price ranges, if we keep this bad sentiment in the bear market going forward and this bad recession, it gets worse. We can see a realistic price range between 79 bucks per share and 121 bucks per share, at least for the next two or three months. In my opinion, like I told you guys, I think the right value for Tesla right now is 198 bucks per share all the way to 250 around there. That's where I think the stock should be at, at in this market at this time, in my opinion. Again, I mean, Amazon 70, 80 PE and they're losing money. Like why? BYD, which, you know, they are literally a car company and yet they have over 200 PE. So why is Tesla down below? Yes, I get it. We have external factors, Twitter, Elon, all that stuff, but it still doesn't make sense for a company like Tesla that they're gonna come out a whole lot stronger than anybody else after this recession. But anyways, man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna welcome all these low prices, you know, the 79 bucks per share, if that happens, <laughs> bring it on, man. I got cash ready, gonna go more all in. That's what's gonna happen. So guys, keep these two EPS numbers in mind, $1.15 and $1.24. One's gonna tank the stock even more, the other one's probably gonna level it or have actually a small rally. Nobody knows, nobody knows what's gonna happen in the next three, six, nine, one year time. Just one year ago today, we were at all time highs of around 400, 300 bucks per share. Now we're reaching the hundreds, which is just ridiculous. Nobody ever predicted that, not even me. But personally, I've never bought Tesla stock for you know one year investment, two year investment. I you know invested in Tesla stock for at least 2030 and above. We all know that Tesla by 2030 is gonna be a completely different company compared to now. And all we gotta do now is be patient. And if you have cash aside and you wanna invest more, now's the time. I mean, opportunities right in front of you. Always investing in anything. This would be real estate, this would be stock market, crypto, even precious metal. The money, the investment that you're putting into those, you guys should be thinking that it's going down the toilet because you're not gonna be touching those until the next decade. That's what investment is. There's no getting, ri getting rich quick scheme here. Tesla was trading flat for seven, eight years. Imagine holding Tesla stock for seven, eight years and still believing that one day, just one day, it's gonna go up 
and get a good return on your investment. That's a painful time. And that's what an investment is. What I'm trying to say here, guys, is that if you're a Tesla bag holder like I am, I have quite a bit of shares. In fact, the next few videos are gonna come out, I'm gonna be exposing how many Tesla shares I have because I keep getting a lot of comments from you guys telling me, asking me how many shares I have, if I have any credibility, or I'm just, you know, doing this for the views. No, I have a lot of shares of Tesla. Again, I told you guys, going all in, and in the next few videos, you guys are gonna see how many shares I have, what the cost, my break even is, and all that goodies. So you'll see how much of a big bag holder I am, and if you're a big bag holder, well, just know that you invested in Tesla for the next five to 10 years. You didn't invest it for, you know, the next year. And if that's the case, well, I'm sorry. You know, should have done your DD more. Or in other words, subscribe to this channel so you can get an idea what could happen, not will, because it's all a prediction. What is also a prediction is these three cases, the bear, base, and bull case for Tesla in 2023. Check them out. You know, if you're a bear case, the bear case I have to redo because I was too optimistic there. In fact, my bull case was actually a whole lot less than my bear case. So interesting but anyways check him out you'll get an idea what i'm thinking what 2023 will look like and uh guys don't forget to subscribe and i shall see you guys in the next video see ya